Some friends of mine and individuals on YouTube have recently been asking about whether or not Catholic social doctrine is compatible with the free market and the idea of free trade and laissez-faire or classical liberalism or liberal, even neoliberalism. Liberalism in any sense. And I know that there are different views. I know that my pastor holds a, a different view. Pastor Robert Sirico of the Acton Institute holds um, a view. There are others like Thomas Woods Jr. of the Mises Institute. He's a historian over there at the Mises Institute. He actually wrote a he wrote something here. Let's see, Catholic social teaching and economic law and unresolved tension. And, and uh, it's his the area, as you say, by any definition, uh, it lay well beyond the competence of the magisterium to presume to describe the workings of economic relationships. Pretty, pretty straightforward. He goes on here. Let's let's read this. One hesitates to describe Catholic social teaching as an abuse of papal and ecclesial power. That would be a good thing, Mr. Woods. Uh, but surely the attempt to impose as moral doctrine, binding the entire Catholic world, pr uh, principles that derive from the Pope's intrinsically fallible reasoning within a secular discipline like economics seems dubious. But the idea goes on here, Woods does, to say, at the very least, it appears to constitute an indefensible extension of the prerogatives of the Church's legitimate teaching office into areas which is po possesses no inherent competence or divine protection. From error. In other words, no, no, keep your hands out of the economic cookie jar, okay? You popes should have kept your pens uh, far away from the from the inkwell because you've, you've gone in an area you should have never gone in, you should have left it in the hands of folks like Mises and Rothbard. But that, that would be his position. So the question we have to ask here, and I'm, I'm hoping to provide with some quotations here that I've derived from a book that I've put together here, it's uh, <laughs> quite quite a thick book, 40 encyclicals concerning Catholic social uh, teaching. And I put it together myself and whatnot. But um, quotes about that that actually deal with the authority of the church in the realm of economics and uh, how binding it is on Catholics. Pope Pius X and Singulare Quatum, I think he, he puts it rather clearly. He says, accordingly, we first of all declare that all Catholics have a sacred and inviolable duty, both in public and in private, to obey and firmly adhere to and fearlessly profess the principles of Christian truth enunciated by the teaching office of the Catholic Church. In particular, we mean those principles which our predecessor had most wisely laid down in the encyclical letter Rerum Novarum. Now, that's, that's a far cry from um, allowing one to criticize Rerum Novarum for inadequacies or what they believe to be things that were said wrongfully. <laughs> I think it's a little, bit, a little bit different. I mean, to obey, firmly adhere, fearlessly profess. I think that that causes a problem for those like Thomas Woods. Pope Pius XI in Quadrigissimo Anno, he says this, that principle which Leo XIII so clearly established must be laid down here at the outset, namely, that there resides in us, when he's talking about the Roman pontiffs, the right and duty to pronounce with supreme authority upon social and economic matters. Now, he, uh, he goes on to say that the pontiffs have the authority to, quote, bring under and subject not only the social order, but economic activities themselves. In Mater and Magistra, by Pope John, uh, Blessed Pope John the Twenty-Third, he says this, he says, we approach the subject, which is social issues uh, with confidence and in the exercise of the rights which manifestly appertain to us and in number 218 he says that the validity of the church's uh, social teaching admits of no doubt. He declares that quote when the hierarchy has made a decision on any point Catholics are bound to obey their directives so this isn't a pick or choose it's not an issue of well can I can I pick this do I have to obey that I know the Pope said so I, I think with each and every one of these declarations so far, we have found that, that at least the claims that they make of themselves, that it would be in the affirmative, that they have competency, they have jurisdiction, they have authority over all these things, and that what they command must be obeyed. Now, what does it say about, well, what do they say about the naysayers? That's the big question. Well, we, we've got 
we've got uh, in Quadragesimo Honor once again. He says this, the Pope says this, and those who would, would seem to hold in little esteem this papal encyclical, meaning Rerum Novarum, and its commemoration either blaspheme what they know not or understand nothing of what they are only superficially acquainted with, or if they do understand, they convict themselves formally of injustice and ingratitude. Now, let me read this once again, because I think that this, I think that this is, is pertinent. I think a couple of these are very pertinent, um, but this one definitely sets the stage. It says this, Quadrigissimo Anno, and those who would seem to hold in little esteem this papal encyclical, Rerum Novarum, and its commemorations, either blaspheme what they know not, or understand nothing of what they are only superficially acquainted with, or if they do understand, convict themselves formally of injustice and ingratitude. John the 23rd says in Mater et Magistra that Catholics must remember too that if in the transaction of their temporal affairs they take no account of those social principles which the, the church teaches and which we now confirm, then they fail in their obligations and may easily violate the rights of others. They may even go so far as to bring discredit on the church's teaching, lending substance to the opinion that in spite of its intrinsic value, it is in fact powerless to direct men's lives. In Populorum Progressio, you have Pope, or, uh, Pope Paul VI saying this, in consequence of the church's legitimate and necessary intervention into social and economic affairs, she cannot, and this is key, Mr. Woods, <laughs> okay, and others, she cannot be accused of going outside her own specific field of competence. Here, in, in my estimation, anyways, here's the clincher. He says this, Christian anthropology, therefore, is really a chapter of theology. And for this reason, the church's social doctrine, by its concern for man, and by its interest in him and the way he conducts himself in the world, belongs to the field of theology and particularly moral theology. Now, I don't know of anybody, any devout Catholic, who would deny that the church is within its competency, its jurisdiction and absolute authority to talk on matters pertaining to the field of theology and particularly moral theology. I don't know a single one. So it's, it's my hope and prayer that, that Catholics as a whole, regardless of whether or not you are a capitalist or a distributist or a fair trader or a free trader, whatever you are, Republican, Democrat, I could care less, the, the, I, I think that we need to go back and, and reread these and say, what are the claims it makes, uh, what claims do the encyclicals make of themselves? What claims do the encyclicals make about those who would disagree <laughs> with the claims they make within, the, within their writings and, and everything else? And then, how can I apply what they've written? And how can I apply it best to my I agree life? with Father Strico in saying that the Catholic social doctrine is not a straitjacket. I would say it's a beautiful one-size-fits-all. <laughs> the straitjacket is a binding thing and very... Uh, there's not not real flexibility in it. And, and Catholic social theory definitely allows for, for flexibility, but more importantly, a straitjacket is, is a form of imprisonment, whereas Catholic social doctrine is a form of liberation. It's a form of, of liberty and of justice. And I think that I'll end it with a quotation by Pope Pius XI in his encyclical dealing with atheistic communism. And he says this, he says, This doctrine is equally removed from all extremes or error and all exaggerations of parties or systems which stem from error. It, remains, or it maintains a constant equilibrium or truth and justice which it vindicates in theory and applies and promotes in practice, bringing into harmony the rights and duties of all parties. The Church does not separate a proper regard for temporal welfare from solicitude for the eternal. Thus, even in the sphere of socioeconomics, although the Church has never proposed a definite technical system, since this is not her field, she has nevertheless clearly outlined the guiding principles which, while susceptible to varied concrete applications according to the diversified conditions of times and places and peoples, indicates the safe way of securing happy progress of society.